get started. Amen. Good to see everybody. Good job, kiddos. Amen. Amen. It's good for them to learn songs about Jesus. Amen. About the Lord, about praising the Lord. Amen. About being happy in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Say, say well, they were they were quiet. Well, why don't you get up here and sing a song? Amen. <laughs> oh, but if I got up here, I'd either be quiet or everybody would turn around and get out of here. Amen. I'd scare everybody out of here. Amen. All right. Bible says make a joyful noise. Amen. So we need to make a joyful noise. I do want to welcome everybody here. I want to welcome any visitors we have. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Good to see everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll open up a word of prayer. We'll greet each other. Say hi to everybody. Get a choir filled up and get ready to praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask and pray, Lord, that your presence be felt here this morning, Lord. Uh, I just pray, Lord, that we meet with you, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, that we don't leave here until we meet with you, Lord. I pray, Lord, Lord, we get our help from you. Lord, we get our guidance from you, Lord. We get our conviction from you. Lord, we get direction from you, Lord. And praise the Lord, we get salvation from you, Lord. And we, we ask and pray. Uh, that you move in a mighty way this morning. I pray, Lord, that we don't quench the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that we're not grieving the Holy Spirit, Lord, but that we're welcoming you in there this morning, Lord. And, uh, that's what we need, Lord, whether we desire it or not. That's what we need, and, and we should want to, uh, we should have a desire to meet with you, Lord. And I pray that that's each heart's desire here this morning. Lord, I just pray as we sing songs about you, we praise you and we lift you up. Lord, I pray as I preach your word that I be a mouthpiece for you, Lord. My, you don't let my flesh get in the way, Lord. Uh, 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 you hide me behind the cross and help me to preach the message that you want me to preach, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that we hear your word and we follow it, Lord. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here lost and need to get saved this morning, Lord, I pray that they don't leave here without getting saved, Lord. I pray, Lord, if there's somebody here who uh, is feeling led to join the church or, or maybe they ain't been baptized uh, uh, before, Lord, I pray that whatever you would have them to do, Lord, I pray that they follow uh, in, uh, the Holy Ghost conviction here this morning, Lord. And, Lord, I pray if there's somebody here who maybe just needs to draw closer to you, maybe they need to fix some things, maybe they need to get down and pray and talk to you this morning, Lord, I pray that that they do that this morning before uh, before they leave here, Lord. I pray that we leave here with our hearts right. Lord, we leave here with uh, uh, getting uh, having done what we needed to do for you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come together and worship you and praise you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen.
it says, My sins, they were many, like the sands of the sea. Amen. We're all sinners, aren't we? Amen. We're sinners. We sin. It says, But the blood of my Savior is sufficient for me. Amen. I'm thankful. Listen, I'm thankful that there's no sin too great for my God. Amen. I'm thankful that there's no number of sins too many for my God. Amen. I'm thankful for the blood. Thankful for Jesus dying on the cross so that we could have salvation. Amen. Amen. We're not, listen, there ain't, there ain't one of us in here that can be good enough to make it to heaven. Amen. The only way you're going to make it to heaven, the only way you're going to be saved is by the blood of Jesus. Amen. By accepting him. I'm thankful for that. If you're here this morning and you're lost, listen, I wouldn't leave here till I got it right with God. Amen. I wouldn't leave here till I call upon him. I wouldn't leave. If you got questions, I wouldn't leave here. If you got questions about salvation, if you got questions about uh, uh, something that God's convicting you about, I wouldn't leave here this morning until I got it right. Amen. Amen. All right. We want to welcome everybody here. Y'all don't mind me. I'm just crazy. Amen. I love the Lord. Amen. Everybody, I, I, there's a lot of people in here that loves the Lord. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 I'm thankful for God. Amen. Amen. Or, or, listen, we're a mess. We need the Lord in our lives. Amen. Amen. All right, we want to welcome everybody here. We want to welcome any visitors. We're glad to have you. Good to see everybody. Um, thankful for everybody being here. Um, we had a good day yesterday, uh, getting to hand out some school supplies and different things like that. Uh, thankful for everybody that helped out with that. Um, thankful for everybody that helped come and, and help out with that as well. Um, also, we'll thank everybody for uh, uh, helping feed the teachers as well. Um, going out and helping them, that was uh, the week before, right? Uh, or was that this week? My weeks are all combining together. It's been a wild couple weeks. Anyway, uh, yeah, so thankful for that. Um, I know they appreciated that. That all went good. I'm thankful for everybody. Thankful for everybody's help on that. All right, before we go to the Lord in prayer and take up offering, uh, I do want to ask, are there any prayer requests this morning? Any prayer requests? All right, all right, so let's be in prayer for Celia. Yes, let's be in prayer for the Watson family. Let's be in prayer for them. All right, Denise and Cody. All right, all right, so let's be in prayer for her, Denise Cody. She lost her husband. Be in prayer for this family. Any others? Owen Russian, yes, let's continue praying for him. Let's continue praying for uh, Pat Paul as well. Um, pray that she has a good recovery. Let's be in prayer for her. Any others? All right, all right, so let's be in prayer for him. Yeah, let's be in prayer for them. Um, I knew that family quite a bit, uh, very well. I knew his older brother real well. Um, That's the Morgan family. Y'all be in prayer for them. Um, the boy was, uh, he fell over the boat there uh, yesterday evening, late yesterday evening, I do believe, and um, they haven't found the body yet, so haven't found him yet, so let's be in prayer for this family. Um, I know they're not uh, doing good at all right now, so let's be in prayer for them. Pray that uh, God gives them peace and comfort during this time. Amen. Amen. Good to have Terry back. Amen. All right. All right. So let's be in prayer for Nathan Jessica's baby. Any others? Okay. Okay. All right, so let's continue praying for Travis Carr as well. And then also, yes, remember the kids, the students, the teachers, the, 
the parents of the kids as well. Let's be in prayer for all of them as they start a new school year. We're praying they have a good school year. Um, everything goes well. They have a safe school year, and we're praying for God's protection on them. Amen. God's protection on them, God's guidance on them, amen. Listen, the devil wants nothing more, I promise you. And nobody wants to think about this, and nobody likes to think about it. But the devil wants nothing more than to lead your kid down the wrong road, amen. And so we're praying for protection. Listen, we're praying for guidance. We're praying that God's hand be upon them, amen. Amen. So praying they have a good year, a good school year, and everything goes well. Summer's over, guys. Got school coming up, coming up. So let's be in prayer for this. Yes. Do what? We got a live yes, we got a live coming up. Um, our uh, uh, registration night is August 31st. I've been saying July 31st for the last three weeks now, but it's August 31st. Um, our live registration night, and then we'll start the following Wednesday with classes. So let's be in prayer about that. Uh, be praying about. Uh, we've got some teacher. Uh, openings and um, also we'll need van drivers and stuff and I we've been talking and uh, but y'all be praying about that if that's something the Lord's leading upon your heart um, y'all come talk to us on that okay um, anything uh, else any other prayer requests all right all right so let's be in prayer for the Mercer family Be in prayer for them. Be in prayer for them. Let's do another one. Unspoken. Are there any other unspoken here this morning? All right, several unspoken. Let's be in prayer for these. Any others? Amen. Amen. We got him moved Friday and they're on a new adventure. Amen. Man, we we hate to see Noah go, but we're we're proud of him, praying for him, praying that he continues doing what God's called him to do. Amen. Amen. All right. Any others before we go to the Lord's prayer? Amen. 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 They still gonna get to see him. Three hours. That trip will start getting shorter and shorter the more you make it. Amen. I promise you. The more you make it, the easier and shorter it gets. Amen. All right, any others? All right. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's continue praying for her as well. Any others before we go to the Lord in prayer and take up our offering? All right, several prayer requests, amen, several praises as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and I believe in the power of prayer, amen. I believe in the power of prayer, and I believe in the power of praising God. Amen. And so let's go to the Lord and let's talk to Him. Seek Him this morning. Lord, we just ask and pray. Lord, you know each and every prayer request, Lord, that was lifted up this morning. You know each and every uh, 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 individual that may be dealing with a lost loved one. You know each individual that may be dealing with health issues, Lord. You know each individual that may be going through a hard time and a tough time right now, Lord. You know each prayer request, Lord, and we believe in the power of prayer, Lord. We believe that you still heal today. We believe that you still take care of situations today. Lord, we believe uh, uh, that you hear our prayers, Lord, and we ask and pray that you be with all the prayer requests this morning. Lord, I pray you be with all the unspoken as well. You know each and every request. Lord, you know each and every heart here this morning. And Lord, we just ask and pray that you be with our service this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for salvation, Lord. And Lord, I just pray you be with this offering, Lord. I pray that it be a blessing to you. And Lord, I pray that we continue to be a light. And I pray that we continue to be a witness. And I pray that you show us uh, uh, where we need to grow in, in, uh, in, in our walk with you, Lord, and in our relationship with you, Lord. And I pray that each and every individual in here, Lord, if they're lost, I pray they get saved. Lord, if they're saved and they may not be where they need to be with you in a, on a personal relationship, Lord, I pray that we don't leave here this morning without getting that right. Lord, that without making the decision that we're going to uh, uh, that we're going to grow closer to you, that we're going to pray more, that we're going to study more, that we're going to be more faithful to you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that we uh, 
uh, where our hearts need to be fixed, Lord, and where our hearts need to be changed, Lord, I pray that we get that right this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, I pray as we sing here this morning, Lord, that we lift you up and we praise you, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our students as well as our, our, our children, our, our youth, Lord, our, our teens, Lord. We pray as they start a new school year. Lord, we're praying for protection upon them. Lord, we're praying for guidance, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you be with them. Lord, we pray that they have a good school year and a safe school year, Lord. And Lord, we pray that they be leaders for you, Lord. They be a witness for you, Lord. They stand up for what's right, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your protection. Lord, we thank you for everything you do for us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. the signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere, I can almost hear the Father, as he says, son, go get my Saved of Christ shall rise. And Jesus sets out on a cloud to call God's children. And in Christ shall rise. Amen. Go ahead and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16. We'll be in 1 Samuel chapter 16 here in just a moment. The title of the message this morning is what does your highlight reel look like? What does your highlight reel look like? look like okay and you may ask what are you talking about well you know how uh you they get done playing a game 
uh, in the NBA and, and ESPN pulls up there and they'll show a highlight reel of the game and they'll show all the high points there or all the low points there but some major things there whether it was good or whether it was bad and they'll kind of put together a highlight reel and they'll show a clip of this and they'll show a clip of that and uh, uh, they'll, they'll kind of sum up the whole game into some highlight points okay and so that's that highlight reel that they run there and I got to thinking about this a little bit. I wonder what my highlight reel of my, what the highlight reel of my life looks like right now. Right now, okay? And I wonder what it's going to look like in the future, okay? And so I, I asked the question, what does your highlight reel look like today, okay? What does your highlight reel look like today? Um, and, and, and we're going to look at somebody's highlight reel uh, in the Bible this morning. We're going to look at David's life for just a moment here this morning. And, uh, 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 and, and I encourage you, we're going to look at some points here. And, and I got thinking about this. Man, that, uh, each point can kind of go with times in our lives, okay? And, and, and you'll see what I'm saying about when we get there. But, you know, I, I can think about my highlight uh, of some things in my past uh, when I got my, when I worked my first job. Um, I can think about when I graduated elementary. I can think about when I graduated uh, high school. or uh, Yeah, I can think about when I graduated high school. Uh, I can think about when I went to college. Uh, uh, I, I, I can think about I can remember, uh, I mean, I can remember the day, I can remember the weather, I can tell you what the weather was like, I can tell you uh, the time, the day of it, I can tell you the time of the year of it, uh, of when I killed my biggest buck with my bow, I can tell you that. Uh, when, I, when I caught my uh, biggest uh, bass, I can tell you what I caught it on, I can tell you where it was at, and I can tell you the conditions of the day on that day too. But you think about these different, and, and, and you say, well, that's, uh, that, but think about this. That, that's all fleshly things, amen? What about my spiritual highlight reel, amen? Think about this. I can think about, listen, and, and, and then I can think about some sad times. I ain't talking about spiritual highlight reel yet, but I can think about some sad times. I can think about some bad times. I can think about uh, uh, some times when I made a fool out of myself. Somebody say amen. I can think about some times when I messed up big time and got myself into a mess. Somebody say amen. I can think about some times where I didn't do the greatest job that I should have uh, that I should have done at work. Amen. And, and, and but I can think about. But I got thinking about what about what's my spiritual highlight real look like? I mean, really, if you're a saved child of God, that should concern you. What has my life been like serving God? And, I, and, you, you know, and, I, and you think about, I think about when I got saved. I can remember the day like it was yesterday. I can remember being on the, on the pew. I can remember shaking. I, remember, I mean, and, and my parents, they just had to sit on the front pew, amen. And I remember sitting up there, and I mean, I was scared to death. I'd done fought it all week at, at church camp. But I can remember that day. I can remember my hands being sweaty. I remember them being red. I was shaking. I remember getting down, though, but I remember, praise the Lord, uh, uh, going up to the preacher. And let me just tell you this. Listen, you don't, go, you don't get saved by going up to the preacher, amen? I remember, though, I went up to the preacher, and we got down, and we started praying. And let me tell you this you don't get saved by the preacher praying for you either amen but I remember getting down on my knees and I remember telling the Lord I said Lord I know I'm a sinner Lord I know that you love me Lord I know that Jesus died upon the cross Lord would you please come into my heart and save me amen and I remember that day like it was yesterday and I remember the Lord saving me amen but I can think about that and then I can think about I can think about as I went on up uh, as I grew up, and I think about when the Lord started calling me to preach. And boy, I think about a bad time in my spiritual life. Where I ran from him, where I didn't, I, I got out of church. I got out of church for a, 
a a little over a year, around a year's time there because I was running from him. I wasn't living right. I wasn't acting right. I wasn't talking right. I wasn't walking right. I can think about some times when I let the Lord down. I can think about some times when God was convicting me. Listen, I can think about some times when I was at church like I was supposed to. I can think about some times when I was praying like I was supposed to and, and, and studying like I was supposed to, but God convicted me to witness to somebody or God convicted me to pray with somebody or God convicted me to do something and I said no to him, amen? I can think about some highlights there of where I done wrong and then where I praised the Lord I got saved, amen? And then I can think about, I can think about this too. I, 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 remember, I remember when uh, Brother Matt, he had told me that, that y'all were looking for a pastor and I remember him telling me, uh, 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 and this asked me if I might be interested in coming down in view of a call. I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember exactly. I remember exactly what I told Melinda, uh, 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 and 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 our talk about it. And then I remember coming down here and preaching. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I remember the first time I came down here. I remember the second time I came down here. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember when God called me, and then when I knew. When I knew that this is where the Lord wanted me to be, I remember it like it was yesterday. That praise the Lord. I remember it. And I, and I, but you think about that. And, and, and some of you, y'all can think about when, when, when you got saved. And you can think about when God called you to preach. And you can think about when you preached here. And you can think about when you witnessed to this person. And you can think about, listen, you can think about when you let the Lord down too. And when you didn't do what you were supposed to. But I want to ask the question this morning. What does your highlight reel look like praise the lord what's your highlight reel look like and are you where you'd want to be and are you where you need to be has has your highlight reel lately had a lot of lows or has your highlight reel had a lot of highs this morning amen and so i want to ask you this morning hey listen if we threw it up there we turned on the projector and we had a video of it i just wonder what my highlight reel would look like right now amen I just wonder what your highlight reel would look like right now. What's our spiritual highlight reel look like? Amen? Amen? Listen, some of us, we'd put that thing on there and some of us would get so sorrowful and get so upset and get so sad. There'd be people getting down in the altar praying. There'd be people, listen, if you've seen it in your eyes and you put a picture up there and you've seen how much you're letting God down and how much you're not doing for the Lord and how much you've become unfaithful to God and you go to looking at that, I believe there'd be a bunch of us in the altar this morning, amen? I believe there'd be a bunch of us in the pew crying. I believe some of us would probably be embarrassed and want to get out of here. I believe some of us would be mad at ourselves. And then and I, I couldn't imagine. Amen. Boy, some of us, we'd be, we'd be so upset. Some, some people would get mad that it was up there. Some people would get upset and sorrowful for what they've done and they'd want to get it right. Some people would be embarrassed. Amen. I believe we'd probably all be embarrassed. Amen. We'd all be sorrowful, amen. But what's our highlight reel look like? You know, and I get to thinking about this, and I've I done a little bit on David's life and, and, and his highlight reel a while back, and we're going to try to hit on some of it. We're not going to, uh, it's going to be a highlight reel, okay? So we're going to try to hit on a little bit of it there. But talking about David, okay, and, and, and we're going to see four major points in, in this highlight reel. Now, there's several different Uh, things that go on in each of these points but we're going to talk about four major points of this highlight reel and and we know that listen we know that David was a man after God's own heart okay we see that over in Acts chapter 13 and verse 22 it says and when he had removed him uh, talking about Saul when he had removed Saul he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave testimony and said I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. I told you, you I'll just stay in 1 Samuel chapter 16. We'll be there in just a moment. But over there in Acts 13, it said, 
In verse 22 it said, a man after mine own heart. So David was a man after mine own heart, okay? After God's own heart, okay? He was a man after God's own heart. He was the youngest of eight sons. His father was Jesse. He was a keeper of his father's sheep. And in 30 years old is when he became king and he reigned for 40 years. Amen. And, 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 and we know about, and, and we're going to talk just a little bit about uh, his early years. We're going to talk a little bit about his middle years. And we're going to talk a little bit about his later years. But everybody in here, listen, everybody in here has got a highlight reel. Amen. Listen, whether you're young, listen, if you've breathed breath, you've got a highlight reel, amen? It, some may be longer than others and some may be shorter than others, but if you've lived life, you've got a highlight reel of your life, amen? You've got a highlight reel, and, 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 and I want to ask you this morning, what's it look like? What does it look like? So we see here, uh, and, and like I said, I said there's going to be four major points. The first one is we see the faith. Of David okay we see the faith of David all right and as a young boy we see the faith of David and if you turn over there to 1st Samuel chapter 16 and we read over here and uh, and I uh, and I'll go ahead and read in verse 1 it says and the Lord said unto Samuel how long wilt thou mourn for Saul seeing I have rejected him from the reigning over Israel fill thine horn with oil and go I will send thee to Jesse the, the Bethlehemite for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? So he said, I provided a king. And it was among Jesse's sons, okay? And he's telling him to go and seek him. If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. So he said to go look, and we know that that, that king, that future king was David, okay? And so we see here, but if you'll read on down, and we'll go ahead and go all the way to chapter 17, okay? And this is where we're going to look about look at the faith of David, all right? And we know that David defeated a Goliath, okay? Uh, but we read over here in verse 34 of chapter 17, and I'm going to, I'm going to hit just a few verses here. But in verse 34 it says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Amen. And so we see here, uh, 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 we see here that he defeated a lion. And then it says in verse 16 or verse 36, the, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And, and, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. He said, I've defeated a bear and I've defeated a lion. Praise the Lord by, the, by, having, by putting my faith and trust in God and by the power of God I can defeat this Philistine. Amen. Listen, we are, to, we are to have enough faith that when we see some giants in the way that we say, I can defeat them. Because my God's bigger than them giants. Amen. That's what David said. David wasn't saying that he could do it on his own. And he wasn't saying that he, was, he had the strength to do it. And he wasn't saying that he had the speed to do it. And he wasn't saying he had the knowledge to do it. He said that the Lord helped him defeat the lion. And the Lord helped him defeat the bear. And praise the Lord by his God and by the Lord. He's going to defeat the Philistine. Amen. And so he had faith. He had faith that he could defeat uh, the Philistine. He had faith in God. And we know that he eventually defeats Goliath. We read that uh, as well as he defeats him. We also know that in his life that Saul was uh, out to kill him. In 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. verse 1 but we know that David he defeated a bear he defeated a lion he defeated Goliath we know that he defeated Goliath he had faith in God he had faith that God would take care of him listen 
he didn't he didn't he didn't have faith in his strength he didn't have faith in his size he didn't have faith in his speed he had faith in God amen he had faith that God was going to help him and, and and you you say what are you talking about giants and you know he, he literally took on a, a literally a giant Goliath amen he was a giant but we all have giants in our life things that look big and things that I mean really you think about you looking up at Goliath That'd be scary, wouldn't it? I mean, really, man, you think, man, I'm about to have to fight this guy. I believe most of us turn around and run, wouldn't we? Amen. You see Goliath and you say, my goodness, I mean, I mean, you'd say, I don't know about this. I got faith in God, but I don't know about this. And that's how we do about most of our giants in our life. Amen. You say, I know the Lord can help me through it, but I don't know about this. This is a big one. This is a scary one. This one I don't know about. Listen, the thing is, is that most of you giants, they're going to be big, obviously, aren't they? They're going to be scary, aren't they? They're going to be the, the unknown before you fight it and before you get through it and before you stand up to it. The unknown's scary, ain't it, okay? And so we know that we've got to have faith just like David did to defeat a bear, to defeat a lion, and to defeat Goliath. And so we've got to have faith. And so we see this faith, all right? And we... You take that highlight reel and you put it up there and and the first part is the faith of David, okay? And you see he defeated a bear and you just see he defeated a lion and everybody's shouting and everybody, think about it. If we put it up there, the highlight of David and and we've seen that he had faith in God and that he defeated that bear and that he defeated that lion. I mean, we're talking about a pretty good action movie so far, amen? We're talking about a pretty good action movie, aren't we? Anybody in here like action movies? But he defeated a lion. He defeated in the bear, we'd be shouting, we'd be excited, and then he'd get up to Goliath, and this this wee little man, he he'd get up to Goliath, and he he's got his sling and his slingshot. Boy, we'd get excited, wouldn't we? And when he defeated him, when he hit him, and he defeated him, we'd get excited and we'd shout and we'd say, man, that man had faith in God, amen. He had faith that he could defeat him, amen. And so we see the faith. But then we read over here in chapter 24, it says, And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from the following, from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of, of en- 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 Gedi." Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And it came to the sheep coats. By the way, there was a cave and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And when the, man, the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed. (laughs) I mean, we're talking about Saul that was out to kill David. He didn't want David to take his reign. He was out to kill him. And and David had the chance to, uh, he was his enemy, and he had the chance to take him out, but he didn't, did he? And he said right here, he said, so David, uh, uh, and he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Amen. He knew better than to kill him, didn't he? He said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I wouldn't touch. Listen, he wasn't going to touch God's anointed. Amen. He wasn't going to touch somebody that was anointed by God. And so we see that, listen, even when David, I mean, we're talking about the, the man that was out to kill him. And David said, I'm not, I've, I've got the chance, but I ain't going to do it. Amen. Because I'm faithful to God. Amen. Talking about the faith. Faith in God, but also faithful to God. Amen. And I get to thinking about that. The faith. Listen, if we put up your highlight reel, and it said the faith of so and so. And if I put up mine, and it said the faith of Ethan Holder. I wonder what it would look like. Amen. I wonder what it would look like. If you put up yours, and it said the faith of, and then you know who you are. I wonder what it'd look like. Will we have? Will we be putting faith in God? But also, will we be faithful to Him? Amen. 
Listen, there's so, you, you say, well, I don't, I, you say, well, I used to be. Listen, there may be some in here that used to be faithful to God and used to put their faith in God, but where are you now? Amen. Amen. Boy, it's quiet in here. Really? You say, I'm not where I need to be. Amen. Listen, there's times, there's some of you in here that used to be faithful to God more than you ever have been, and now you're not. Amen. There's some of you that probably used to put your faith in God. You used to talk to God, and you say, Lord, help me get through this. Lord, take care of this. Lord, help me. Show me, Lord. What do you want me to do? I'm going to put my faith and trust in you. And now you don't anymore. Amen. Yeah, I think about, listen, I think about times in my life where I put my faith in God. I can think about times in my life where I didn't put my faith in God. Amen. Would, would, would I have faith in the Lord, but we're also to be faithful to Him? What if we put up there underneath the faith and put that, and then we put under, underneath that the faithfulness of it? Have you been faithful to study? Have you been faithful to pray? Are you faithful to worship the Lord? Are you faithful to serve the Lord? Are you faithful to witness for the Lord? Are you faithful to show up for the Lord? Are you faithful to serve Him? Are you faithful to follow Him? Are you faithful to pray? Amen. Are you faithful to worship Him? Are you faithful to serve Him? Somebody say amen. Are you faithful to pray? Are you faithful to, to, to witness? And it's like I said, if we put that up there, some of us would be sorrowful this morning, wouldn't we? Amen. Some of us would be embarrassed. Some of us would be sad. Some of us would be angry at ourselves. Have you been faithful to God? And we see here, but not, we see it. I mean, we see it. David, he was a man after God's own heart. And boy, it's looking pretty good right now. It, we see the faith of David, and it's looking pretty good. But then we get to the next one, and it don't look too good. We see the failure. Second Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 11. We see the failure of David. Second Samuel chapter 11 and verse 2. It said, And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not that Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified for her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. We see the failure, man. It was looking good and we were shouting and we were praising and we were excited for him having faith in God and for de uh, defeating the bear and for defeating the lion and for defeating Goliath and, and, and having being faithful to God and not uh, 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 killing Saul. And we see all these things, but then we get over here and it takes a new chapter in it. And we see the failure. And we see here that I'm talking about David. Listen, nobody's immune to it. Somebody say amen. David, a man after God's own heart, just slept with another man's wife. Amen. He just slept with another man's wife. And then we see over here in verse 5, it says, And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So he got her pregnant. And then you read on down to verse 13. And for, and, and, and for time's sake, we'll go, I'll kind of uh, uh, paraphrase it here. But in verse 13, he tried to get her husband drunk, Uriah. Okay, he tried to get him drunk and tried to trick him into going home. And so that he would be with his wife. And, and he, he would think because... Because Uriah's been gone, okay? Bathsheba's pregnant now. Uriah's been gone, okay? Something don't add up. You see what I'm saying? And so he was trying to hide it. He had done sin. He had done messed up. He was trying to hide it. He was trying to get him to go home and be with his wife. And so then he got her pregnant. Then he tried to get her husband drunk and to trick him into going there. We're talking about a man after God's own heart. And it said in verse 15, uh, we, we see over there in verse 15 how he told Joab to kill you. Uriah to send him to the hottest part of the battle to the front lines to the worst part and so we see here the failure amen and in chapter 12 we see the failure and I wonder listen if we put up we put up the highlight reel and we all know we're sinners don't we amen 
for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us are sinners, amen? And we got up there and we got to that second chapter, the failure. Boy, I bet that'd be a long part of the movie, wouldn't it? A long part of the highlight reel, wouldn't it? But the failures of dot, 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 so-and-so, okay? The failures of Ethan, the failures of you, the failures of where, listen, there's going to be times in our life, and I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's good, it is not right, it is not good, and we'll see that here in just a moment, but there's nothing good about it, but there will be failures in our life, amen? There will be failures. Listen, we're sinners, aren't we? We mess up, but there will be failures. But we see the failure of David. And we see where we mess up. And we see the failure. And I, and I ask you the question this morning. What's your highlight reel look like? What's some failures that you've done? I believe we can probably all think of some. We can think of where we failed. We can think of where we didn't. Listen, we're talking about a man after God's own heart. He just slept with another man's wife. She conceived a child. Then he tried to hide it. And when he couldn't hide it, he killed her husband to try to hide it. A man after God's own heart. You say, my goodness. Listen, there's not one of us in here that's exempt from messing up and failing. Amen? Not one of us. Not one of us. But you see the failure. But then you see the fourfold. You see the failure, but then you see the fourfold of David. In chapter 12, and I'll read it, uh, try to read it quickly here. Um, in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Well, you read on in chapter 12. We'll actually go to chapter 13. But you read on in 12 how the Lord sent Nathan unto David. He sent him, and he came, and verse, I'll read verse 1 of chapter 12, but y'all, y'all, y'all stay in chapter 13. It says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. And he, read, he went on to tell him a, 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 a story here, and that story was uh, in, in uh, representation of what David did, okay? And, and, and David was mad about it, but then he told him in verse 6, he uh, uh, David's anger, he was mad, okay? He was mad about this story that Nathan told him. And in verse 6 he said, And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Because he, so he said, this man, what he's done and what, he's, what he has done, he's going to restore it fourfold, all right? And so, and, but then in, in verse 7, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out. Of the hand of Saul, okay? So he said, you're the man I'm talking about. And he tells, and, and it's all in, uh, in, in relation to what David has done, okay? What David's done to Bathsheba, what he's done to her husband, what he's done, okay? And, and, and we know that, uh, but we see the fourfold. You say, what are you talking about? Listen, the, the effect of the failure, okay? The effect of the failure. Listen, the Lord has mercy upon us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord's got mercy upon us. He's got love. He loves us. He cares for us. But there will be consequences from our failures at times. Amen. There will be consequences. Listen, it'll cause separation between you and the Lord. If you turn over there to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, But be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life, everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due, due season we shall reap if we faint not, okay? And talking about that, listen, there's consequences. If you sow, listen, uh, 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 reading that there, it says, uh, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, okay? So if you sow to your flesh, 
you're going to reap corruption, aren't you? Amen? You sow to your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. You sow to the Spirit, and you reap life everlasting there. We can talk about salvation there, but also talking about how that what you do, there are consequences. Amen? And you read through all of God's Word. You read over there in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2, talking about how your iniquities and how your, the things that you do can cause separation from God. And I get to thinking about this. I wonder what our fourfold would look like. You know, think about it. I wonder what our failures are, but I wonder what our fourfold, what we've had to, what we've had to go through because of our sin. What we've had to deal with because of our sin. And you say, what are you talking about? Well, David, and, and I'll read it, I'll just kind of go through it quickly here. But the fourfold, if you read on down to 2 Samuel chapter 13, and you can read this some other time, but 2 Samuel chapter 13, we read Amnon, David's son rapes Tamar, David's daughter. All right? Absalom murders Amnon, which is also David's son. He murders Amnon because of what he did with Tamar, okay? And then Absalom tries to overthrow David and the throne, okay? And then we know too before all of that that the child that they conceived, that David and Bathsheba conceived, he died, okay? And, 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 and we read all this that's happening to David. You say, why is all this happening? Listen, it was the fourfold. It was because of what David did. It was because of the failures of David. And you say, well, you, you, the thing I'm getting at, okay, I I want everybody to get this. Listen, we think, here's what happens. is we do something wrong, and we know it's a sin, and we know we did it wrong, and the Lord has mercy upon us, we think, well, I guess I got away with that. And sometimes the Lord has mercy on us. But we keep doing that, keep doing that, and eventually there's going to be consequences. Amen. Listen, it may, you may say everything's going good right now and everything's going right right now, but I promise you, if you know it's a sin and you keep on sinning and you keep on doing it and you stay in that sin and you don't change nothing, just like David, you just keep trying to hide it, but you just keep digging the hole deeper and deeper, eventually consequences will come, amen? Listen, we don't like that, we don't want that. That's the worst part of the highlight reel. We don't like that. But we see the failure. We see the fourfold. But over here in 2 Samuel chapter 12. <clears throat> you see the failure. Put your highlight reel up there and you see the faith. You see the failure. We see the fourfold. Now my question for you. What's your highlight reel look like? What part of that highlight reel are you in right now? Listen, are you in the failure section? Are you in the fourfold section? Are you in the faith section? But praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that there's a forgiveness section. Amen. Amen. Listen, you may have had failures. You may have messed up. We're talking about David, a man after God's own heart that messed up big time, didn't he? Amen. He messed up big time. But in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and in verse 12, it says, For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Amen. It said, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Amen. The forgiveness. And you read on Psalms 51 about how David prays to create in him a clean heart and how David, he's, he's sorrowful. And we know that the Lord forgave him. Amen. The Lord forgave him. He might have still had to go. He might have still had to be uh, have that fourfold of what he did. But don't, ain't you glad that we've got a God that forgives us? What I'm saying is no matter what part of your highlight reel you're in this morning, whether it's good, whether it's bad. If you're, listen, if you're in the worst of worst failures you've ever been in, God will forgive you this morning. Amen. Listen, you may be, you may be, uh, your highlight reel, it may, it may be on there. And the very, start, uh, the very start of it, you're lost. And all the way up till today, you're still lost. 
But I got a God that can change that this morning. Amen. You may be lost and you may be lost all the way up till today, but if you're lost and you're a sinner, I want you to know that the Lord will forgive you of your sins and if you'll call upon Him and if you'll believe in Him, He'll save you this morning. Amen. It's the greatest. Listen, that'll be, that's the, you don't matter what all's on there. When you get saved, that's the greatest highlight of the highlight reel. Amen. It's the greatest uh, part of your life, getting saved. But we see the forgiveness of David. I'll end with this. What does your highlight reel look like? Listen, there's some of you here this morning that used to be in the faith section that's not in the faith section anymore. Amen. There's some of you here this morning that may be in the failure section. But praise the Lord, we can be in the forgiveness section. Amen. If you're here this morning and you're lost, don't leave here this morning without calling upon the Lord. He'll save you. If you're here this morning and you say, man, I ain't been, I'm, not, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. I've not been doing what God's called me to do. I've not been following the Lord. I've not been faithful to the Lord. I haven't been faithful to studying. I haven't been faithful to praying. I haven't been faithful to coming to church. I haven't been faithful to living for the Lord. I haven't been faithful to, to, to talking to the Lord. Listen, don't leave here this morning without getting it right. What if we put the highlight reel? The thing is, is no matter what the highlight reel looks like today, it can change tomorrow, amen. It can change right now, amen. No matter how bad. Listen, we're talking about David's highlight reel. It went from, you read on down, or, or, or you read on down here, it went from man after God's own heart. Now, y'all think about this. It went from man after, and, 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 and we could read on, but it went, it went from man after God's own heart to failure to man after God's own heart, amen. Listen, you may have been, you say, I ain't where I used to be. Well, praise the Lord, you can get back there starting right now. Amen. You can get back there. You say, I've never been where I need to be. Well, praise the Lord, by the forgiveness of God and by the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus, you can be there today. Amen. You can be there. So here's my question. As everybody stands, we get ready for invitation. I want everybody to listen real quietly. Everybody stand. Here's my question. What does your highlight reel look like? And how are you going to change it today? Amen? Now, we put that, I mean, that's a good, good observation there, but in all seriousness, what does your highlight reel look like, and what are you going to do today to change it? Today may be the only day you have to change your highlight reel. This may be the only opportunity you have. If you're here this morning, you're lost. Don't leave here without getting saved. If you're here this morning, you know that you're not in the right spot, that you need to be with the Lord. Don't leave here. Listen, if you, if you leave here without making the decision, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Lord, I'm going to get back to where I need to be. If you, don't, if, you, if you leave here without making that decision, you may not ever decide. We know that the work starts after we leave, but the decision starts right now. Don't leave here this morning without deciding what you're going to do about your highlight reel. We have invitations. We have invitations.